Hi everyone, I wanted to make a real quick video to show off one of my uh, favorite little secret tips in the Fusion page. And I say secret, although it's, it's definitely not meant to be a secret, it's part of the intended functionality for this tool, but I don't think it's something that a lot of people uh, would think to do by themselves. I definitely didn't even consider it um, until I, I discovered it in a roundabout way. And I've even brought it up in a few of my videos before, but I thought it was cool enough and applicable enough that it merited its own video. So here we are. And what I'm going to be showing off is my absolute favorite way to make grids or patterns or any sort of duplicated shape in a scene. I'll show off a bunch of examples soon. But first, we're looking at this cool radar effect for a reason. This is one of the included free presets in DaVinci Resolve. If you open up your effects library, under here you have templates, you have several different categories. In motion graphics, you have Radar 2. If you click that or drag that down into your nodes panel down here, it'll pull in this node tree and this is what is creating this effect. I have a video walking through all of these included free templates, and I also have a video that looks specifically at this effect and breaks it down and tries to teach you the methods by which you can break down some of the other presets and learn some really cool things about the Fusion page like what I'm gonna be showing off in this video. Here's how I discovered this effect. I was looking at how this effect was made and I was seeing it was starting with just this single background node. And then it was going into a brightness and contrast node. It was making it a little dark. It was being masked using these two mask nodes into another brightness and contrast, which is pulling down the opacity on everywhere else. So you have this X and cross, but then if you look at the next node, you see all of a sudden it is being turned into this grid. And this is super cool. And it's doing that through a standard transform node. And if we open up the transform node, make sure our inspector is open, you can see that what is happening is that the size is being pulled down and also the edges parameter, which is normally on canvas has been set to wrap. If I change that back to canvas real quick, you'll see that here it is still only that single cross, but because we have this set to wrap, when it scales down whatever is in frame, it looks to the other side of the frame and brings that in and continues the pattern or the shape or whatever you're working on. So then the preset took this, took it into a coordinate space one to make it circle, and then did all the other cool stuff to make this main radar effect. Very cool. And I instantly knew that this was super applicable to a ton of other things. So over here, I have a bunch of other use cases. Let's start here. I have a standard background node that I have an ellipse mask on, and then I have that going into a transform that has the side pulled down, edges set to wrap. And if we preview that, you'll see that now, instead of one circle, we have created an entire field of circles. Same thing on this next one. I took a single cross, and when duplicated through scaling down and wrapping, you get this pattern. And you can even do some funky things with animation. You'll see here on this background node, I have this one bar that's staying still, the other bar that is just constantly rotating. And because it's duplicating it, you get this really rad pattern over here. And depending on where you create your animation, you can have all sorts of different effects. Here, I am actually not animating the original background shape. That doesn't change, but on the transform node, I pulled down the size and it says wrap, but also we are just shifting the center coordinate. So it is just taking that entire pattern and sliding it to the left. And I used this exact effect in a pack of presets that I made for streamers quite a while ago now. You'll see the first is just these lines moving off to the right again from just this single line. The second, looking at this arrow, becomes this giant field of arrows where they just sort of like shift in the background. I think this is a really cool background texture for a stream or anything else. Then we're looking at just this X, same thing, just sort of shifts off to the side. This one is just zoomed in a little bit, and this is where some interesting stuff starts to happen. So this one, if we look at the background node, we're actually animating on the mask path. So you'll see that over time, this mask is just going to be ping-ponging back and forth. And over here, it just looks like the X is getting a little warped. But when we bring that into this transform node, you'll see that it is creating this really cool abstract pattern, especially when it gets towards the edges and then bounces back. I like this one a lot. And then this final example from that pack, again, we have these circles, which are doing the same thing, just sort of normal animation here, just a few circles. But when you get funky with it, you have this almost kaleidoscopic look here that just ping pongs back and forth so that it loops. And all of this is just from a single standard transform node. You just change this edges parameter to wrap and pull down the scale. 
Let me walk through creating an example. We're gonna create a standard background node, have it be white. Let's just recreate this example I have set up here. So in this way, I'm just going to create one mask here. I'm going to duplicate that mask and rotate this 90 degrees. Nice. So here we have our background node with a mask. And if we bring that into a transform, pull that up on our second viewer, all you have to do is change its edges to wrap and pull down the side. And you see this pattern starts to duplicate. And if you change the angle or the Y position, all of that comes through as well. But there is one super interesting thing to remember, and that is that aspect ratio matters. Because this background node is a standard 16 by nine aspect ratio, when you duplicate it by pulling down the size, you see that you don't get a perfect square grid, you get a grid that is sort of this wider horizontal frame. But if you want a square grid, you can just come into a background, image, uncheck auto resolution, and I'll go into something like 1080 by 1080. And you'll see those masks stay uniform. And then now this transform node, you see that you have perfect little squares right here. You can do whatever you want. And if you wanted to get this back into a 16 by nine timeline, I would create a standard background node, pull down the alpha so it's transparent, connect these two outputs. And then at first you will see that it sort of crops this to the original transform but if you come into that transform and go to flatten transform it will change to fill that entire workspace that your second merge is going into and we have just been using this technique on simple background nodes with masks but you can do this with footage you can do this with images anything can be piped into a transform the edge is set to wrap and it will duplicate whatever is in frame in this same manner like I said, I was pretty shocked when I saw this for the first time, just how easy it was to create entire fields, entire arrays of whatever shape you want. I think for new users, nodes can get pretty overwhelming and you could be trying to uh, duplicate shapes and running them into multiple duplicate nodes and that can get confusing, super, super quick. This is surprisingly easy. It's super powerful, but it is super easy to miss as well. So that's why I wanted to make this video. I, I hope this was helpful to you. I hope you'll use it in tons of projects whenever you're in the Fusion page and need this functionality. It's really simple. One standard transform, edges set to wrap, and you scale down. It's rad. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.